Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy. Just hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, His indeed. Album is out right now. Not now. I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, join the Lucas. Join Welcome, up. brother. What's up? What's up, G? What's How you up? doing? How you feeling? I'm good, man. You good? Yeah, I'm good. How y'all feeling? Good? Good. Yeah. You got some good hair products going yes, on in your you life, Johnny. The like, beard, the head, the, the, so the curls. The curls. He said so glow. That's that so glow. <laughs> 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 not now I'm busy, man. Tell me about that album title. So yeah, it's just um not now I'm busy is is really, you know, the space that, you know, I've been in my life for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just really not having you know, really not having time, you know, for a lot of things that are even important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just trying to balance everything. Um, and there's also a double message if you listen to the album as mm -hmm. well about, you know, me, um, you know, killing my old self to become the new, the new, you know, version of myself that I am today. Mm -hmm. Now let's you talk know. that title though. When a lot of people say uh, staying busy is a response to unresolved trauma. Yeah. So are you really busy or are you trying to avoid something? I think that's, I think, I think that sounds pretty accurate mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I think it's a little bit of both as far as like, really being busy for sure. And then, you know, um, a response to unresolved trauma for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Now your albums, your videos, and the, the stuff that you put out, you think about it before you put it out, right? You're just not doing a record. It's like, it's almost like the music you're putting out is, is intentional to, mm -hmm. to help. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Because, you know, watching your, your videos, it's like it's, they're movies, they're self movies, but they always have a message, mm -hmm. like it's meaningful. I think honestly, I think it's beyond me. I think that, you know, when I create these records, I think that um, maybe when I'm writing it, I feel like I'm channeling like something greater than me, like a higher power or something that's like helping me write these records for me to be able to tap into, you know, to talk about some of these things that I talk about, you know, like with the record I just released, the best for me, mm -hmm. you know. With Jelly Roll. Right. Jelly Roll, yeah. Shout out to my, my brother Jelly Roll. I've never been addicted to, you know, drugs, but somehow I was able to write from a perspective of that as if I, mm. I was, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And same thing with, you know, I'm not racist, you know, same thing with I'm sorry or any of the other records that touch on suicide or, you know, touch on other things that I'm channeling something greater than me that's helping me create these records. I don't know where, how, what, but I know that I'm getting some type of help from the higher power mm -hmm. that's helping me create these records and and to channel those actual emotions, you know, on the concepts of some of those records. And you're also helping other people too, like, because if you're able to speak to something that you've never even experienced, yeah. you feel like you're like you're kind of being used as a, a you know a messenger for things. Like sure. you actually are healing people as well. And this has been like a four year gap since ADHD. You mm -hmm. know, you dropped that 2020. Mm -hmm. Is that why it was such a gap because you were because this, this is not now i'm busy mm -hmm. but what what did the gap come from you going through certain things yeah or i think things? um <clears throat> in between that you know really finding myself because this is the first time that i've ever been able to kind of relax and not be put in, in survival mode mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like this is the first time I've ever not, you know, the first time I haven't been in survival mode, you know. Financially, you mean? Yeah, financial, mm -hmm. you know, survival mode where I'm actually, you know, able to try to find myself, you know, because up until then, I didn't really know who I was as a person because it's like, I was always sidetracked by survival mode, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, once I had the financial stresses taken off me and I was able to take a step back and get to kind of, you know, know myself, you know, I started really going through stuff, you know what I'm saying? And and I started to learn more about me and, um, you know, just as a person, you know what I'm saying? And and a lot of those things kind of shaped me into who I am today. Pause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you. Was that, why was that a pause? Now, I, didn't, I didn't catch the pause in that one. And I got gay ears. You go back and go back and. Oh, my God. You got gay ears. What did you say? I didn't catch that one. Now. It shaped them, yo. There you go. I said it shaped me. Pause. Shape, but. Yo. but you go back His pauses that. go deeper. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Pause, pause, yeah. oh, pause, pause, pause. 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 Again. For sure. I was going to ask, you know, listening to your project and, and over the years and, and watching your videos, right? <clears throat> and lyrically, you, you get busy. Mm. Dead nice, right? Whether you, it's a, a song that's helping people or you just on some street shit. Mm. I started thinking the other day, I'm like, well, why when we have those conversations, right? And we, we talk about the J. Coles and we talk about the Kendricks and we talk about 
the Drakes. Why don't they ever talk about Joyner Lucas in those same conversations? Because yeah. um, you get busy and it, lyrically you're a problem. And I think everybody yeah. would say that. But when we have those discussions and conversations, they don't necessarily mention. So is that. But so the interesting thing about that is there's two parts to that question. Number one, I think that any of those artists that you named got like 10 years on me. Drake was mm. in the game 10 years before I came in the game. Kendrick was got in the game ten, like at least seven, eight years before I got in the game. J. Cole has been in the game for about seven, eight years, but he came in when Kendrick came in, pause. And um, that's number one. Number two, I am in those conversations when you're talking to people like, you know, Marshall, when you're talking to Eminem. You know, he, mm. he always mentions me, you know, yeah. he puts me right next to them. He always talks about, you know what I'm saying, even in the records, you know what I'm saying, he'll be like, you know, his favorite artist is, you know, and sometimes he'll even throw my name first, you know yeah. what I'm saying, Joyner, Cole, Kendrick, you know what I'm saying, and he, he has, you know, he it definitely acknowledges that, and, and you know, he's, in my mind, you know, I, he's considered, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, so if I'm getting, if, if that guy mm -hmm. is, is saying those things, and, you know, and I guess that means that stand for something, right? It means mm -hmm. something. So I don't really, and apart from that, I don't really care, like, if I'm mentioned with, you know, those guys. I don't think I have enough time in yet. Mm -hmm. They have more time than, than I do, you know what I'm saying? So I haven't even had the time that they have to. Gotcha. That's all. And you know, you, you talked about, you know, killing yourself on the album. What is the significance of you killing the old version of yourself at the end of the album? Well, the significance of it is, you know, the old... I, I like to say that um, a lot of people, um, a lot of people that have a revelation, you know, and they tend to grow, pause. You know, I would say that they're enlightened, you know, by their experiences of life, and that causes them to become a different pers person in a positive way, right? And I would say that through my experiences and the traumas and things that I've been through actually created the reverse effect and made it so that I'm growing in, in more of a negative way, right? Not even by choice. It's like because of the traumas and things that I've been through, I'm no longer, you know, susceptible to being a nice guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm no longer bubbly. I'm no longer, you know, uh, as... Uh, positive as I, I used to be, you know mm. what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, due to my traumas, I've, I've, I've grown into, mm. you know, a different version of myself that um, I feel like maybe a trauma response, which he, and which Charlemagne said, you mm. feel me? So um, I had to kill off, you know, in order for me to, um, to grow in my own way, pause. I had to kill off that version of myself because that version of myself got used. Mm -hmm. You know, that version of myself people took advantage of. You feel me? So it's like, you know, the new person that I am today is no longer susceptible to those things. You know what I mean? Did you have mm -hmm. to write that figuratively so you didn't do that literally? Like, did you have to write about what killing you yourself off so you didn't actually do it? Oh, no, nah, I ain't never, you feel me? I ain't never really ever been suicidal. Okay. You yeah, know what I mean? Okay. I never been suicidal, but I just knew when I started, when I had took the time between albums and, you know, I'm just going through real life shit, as you heard in records like Broski, mm -hmm. you know, records like Cut You Off, you know, with NBA, you know, um, as I'm going through real life shit and I'm really starting to learn who I am, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I, I knew that, um, I had to, I had to get rid of the old me. Wow. Why did we get the experimental album? So we didn't get the experimental album because it wasn't something that I felt like I wanted to stand behind. Pause. Okay. Right. It was like that was a pause. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, that, your pauses have been a little off. That one was made was made a lot. <laughs> now this pause just make you think. Like, damn, what do you say? <laughs> But you know that it was, we have. Excuse me, I think um, the experimental album for me, I felt like was a little bit too left field even for me, mm. right? It was like, I, I found myself like, you know, going back into like, um, I started going back into 
creating records that I felt like didn't really represent to where I wanted to be and who I am now. You know, I dropped the record Blackout with um with Future. You know what I'm saying? And in that record, you know, I'm talking about some shit that I used to talk about before I got on, which is like, you know, if I didn't make it, then I would be, you know, selling the, you know, kilos mm -hmm. and shit, you know, but these are things that I was rapping about before I even got on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if I didn't break into the music industry, then I was gonna move from selling eight balls to kilos, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm in a place now where it's like, why the fuck are you even talking about that shit? Yeah. You already where you need to be, you feel right, me? Right, so right, it's right. like, why are you going back to that shit? It's like, you know, and it's like, I think I did it on some like culture shit, you feel me? And it's like, I'm not about to jump on a record with Future and Flex, get on my lyrical shit and you know what I mean? And it, that shit's kind of whack to do. So it's like, let me just dumb my shit down. And it's like, you know, and I decided to do that. But I also knew that before I released the record or when I was doing the video and I'm sitting there and I got all this bread and I'm yada, 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 mm -hmm. you know, I'm just like, damn, nigga, I feel like this don't feel like the type of shit I want to be on right now, mm -hmm. but I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? For the culture. And I did it. And when I put it out, it was the response that I got from it was exactly how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But at the same time. Oh, like people telling you like, why are you on this Yeah, type of but time? at the same time, right? But. A lot of people don't know me though. You feel me? Like right. they they look at the storytelling shit and they just assume like, oh, this nigga, you know, he not about that or he did not like niggas don't know like where I, where I come from. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't know Jordan before Jordan got on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of niggas don't know that type of shit. But these are records that I've done records like that before. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I'm in a different place in my life now. So it's mm -hmm. like. You know, when I had dropped it and I got that response, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, damn. Like, I already know, like, almost the whole album was shit like that. And I got mm -hmm. all these features from all these artists and shit that, you know, I felt like was, like, culture shit of, like, what's in now, but it really wasn't really, you know what I'm saying? What the, you was... Exactly, the yeah. nigga that I... You know what I mean? So it just didn't make sense. So it was like, fuck that. I'm scrapping this shit. Got it. You know what I mean? So I made an executive decision to scrap that shit. You, you talked about Broski earlier and... uh cut you off and, and I always wonder like when you've had people do you dirty in those type of situations has it made it challenging to form like deep connections with people being that everybody might have their own yeah. hidden agendas yeah 100% Man. it started making me like realize like why niggas like Marshall move a certain way mm -hmm. you feel me cause like with that niggas like getting on the phone with him is like you you you, you could probably hop on the phone with, with Barack quicker than you could hop on the phone with Marshall mm. That nigga's right. calling you from a line where his manager's assistant is calling you from a 1-800 number and then it's just like elevated music and it's like, please hold, Marshall's mm -hmm. coming to the phone, you can't have his number. Not that accessible. Nobody has his number, That's he's incredible. not accessible, you can't talk to him. It's like hopping on the phone with the president, right? And it's like, I always wonder like, why this nigga move like that? I had a conversation with him on the shoot at a Lucky You. And I was in his trailer and I'm like, yeah, man, like anytime you want to talk or anytime you want to build and like, you know, whatever, you know, just, you can hit me, you know what I'm saying? Like we could talk and we could build on his music shit, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, I could tell he was really like real standoffish, you know what I'm saying? And I would ask Royce like, yo, why is he like that? He's like, man, that nigga's just been through a lot of shit. You don't really like, you know, he's, he's very closed off from people, right? And I'm just like, damn. And I never understood it, right? And it's mm -hmm. just like, when I started, you know, experiencing this shit that I, I was experiencing, I got it instantly. I'm like, this is why this motherfucker don't want to, he don't want new friends, like, he don't want, you feel me? And it's like, I get it 100%. And he was the mm -hmm. biggest star in the world at one point, so imagine. <laughs> he still is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That nigga ain't gotta drop a fucking album, he's still, yeah, he can't just be outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. not the nigga that could just be outside like that. He can't just walk the streets of fucking New York. Mm -hmm. Like you got, you know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. a whole thing. He's a he is a big deal. Like mm -hmm. to this day, you know what I mean? And it's like he moves like that for a reason. You know what I'm saying? He's not. You could probably Jay Z be texting niggas and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like some niggas don't know how to handle trauma and all that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um but I'm starting to get into the space now where it's like I'm starting to understand why these industry niggas move. When I came into the game, like, yo, these niggas are weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First thing mm -hmm. I'll say, like, why the fuck these niggas are so weird? Mm -hmm. 
But now I I see why niggas is weird. You gotta have boundaries. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Gotta have boundaries. I was gonna ask with your with your videos, right? Yeah. Art, a lot of art. How long does it take to prepare those videos, right? Because I'm watching your videos and even the one with Jelly Roll or, or Roll Timmy, and the fact that it's high budget. I mean, in one, I think you got a tank in one video, but yeah. not only that, you got the the, the actors in the video mm. knowing the lyrics before the song comes out. So that takes time and that takes mm. preparation. It's it's mm. almost like it's like a real movie. So, yeah. what is the preparation for a Joyner Lucas video? So, I'm creating the visuals before I'm creating the song. Really? Right. So I'm I already had the videos and the visuals in my head right before I. That was a pause. I don't think so. <laughs> right. That was like videos in your head. I'm like, no. It was a heavy breath on you, so I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I right, said I was actually burping, but I didn't want to flick it out. So, I was just... all right, all right. <laughs> so, so I'm creating the visuals like mentally. Mm -hmm. Already, the, the script is already written. Now I just got to write the song. I already see it. I, I see the house. I see the guy. I know what this is about. I, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I just got to create the record. I got to find the beat. Now nah, I found the beat and then I'm writing and I'm meticulously trying to find a character in my head of who's going to play this role. And once I lock in on that character, from the moment the song is done, I'm now contacting a rapper. And the reason why I'm choosing a rapper is because I know a rapper is going to memorize it really quick. Mm. Mm. I know that they're, it's not going to look weird when they're lip syncing it, mm -hmm. right? So I'm choosing rappers specifically, or if you have any type of, you can be a singer, an R&B singer, but if you, yeah. if you know how to memorize some shit, you know, it makes sense, but I'm not gonna choose somebody that doesn't do music, you know what I mean? Um, so I send it out and I tell that person they have a certain amount of time to learn it. You know, nine times out of 10, they're excited to do it, so they're learning it quick. Um, Rotimi was excited to do it. Yeah. What's interesting about Broski is I've never seen to this day, I never seen one episode of Power. Really? Wow. To this day, damn, never seen it, and I stayed away from watching it on purpose because I don't want to be influenced. Yeah. By a lot of these shows, and then you start bleeding in through the my videos, and then now niggas is like, oh, this this shit look like that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And because I'm a creative, I try not to watch certain things because I don't want it to be influenced by it, right? And um. I actually seen Rotimi in this movie called For the Love of Money. Mm. It was an independent film oh, with yeah. him and Kerry Hilson. It's good. the first time I ever seen Rotimi act. And I was like, yo, I was like, I like his character. Mm. I love his character, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And at the same time, I was writing Broski and it was just like, I started to have his his um, face in my mind, pause. Pause that. Right, yo, I was that right? yeah, These are not pauses. These are very I can't light. Say, I, can't, I can't say that. Y'all right, so just mad because y'all can't get them. That's what I'm saying. Niggas can't <laughs> get me. <laughs> you trying to pause niggas all day. Hey. Well, go ahead. <laughs> so motherfucking, um, I knew that I wanted him to play the role. Mm. And I sent him the record. And, um, you know, he memorized it. We shot a video in, in like two weeks. I edit, direct everything myself, and then um, I was holding on to that for a little bit. Why? Because it was a part of the album, and I was still creating the album in real time, and mm -hmm. I wanted to drop it, you know, while I was dropping um, some of the other records, you know. That one hit I, so hard because I think everybody has been through that, like yeah. a friend that yeah. you've helped and yep. you felt like the friend looked at you differently. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it, it hit because it was like, damn. You like, might be the only person in history who can put out a song and a video that overshadows a whole project. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that, Like, it's, it's just the strangest thing. I appreciate it. Like, Broski that. will come out and it's like, that's what people want from Joyner. Or, you know, Best best For Me will come out and they're like, oh, that's what I want. But you know you got a whole album coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, do you ever think to yourself I might have to do a whole album of visuals? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, um, I was gonna make turn Broski into like a series. You know what mm. I mean? With Rotimi and like, really create a story out of it and like go crazy with it. Right. Um, so I was entertaining that for a little bit, but yeah, I've thought about it, mm -hmm. about doing the whole album series thing or whatever. Um, but I just, I just haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when you do, I mean, I act sometimes, you know. I got you. And I just, 
I really just been wanting it like was that an industry I got you or like a no, kind of sound like kind of sound like call my people an industry <laughs> I got you I'm calling people you hear the elevator music yeah, yeah, elevator music you might hear go through management and all His, that. <laughs> I think that these music I think these um these these music videos are very inspired by movies mm -hmm. not from specific movies I mean just the feel of it pause right it's like it's very cinematic and it's like I'm creating my own movie within a visual within the music and I think that's subconsciously me trying to um I really I really uh wanted to get into movies being into being doing movies you know what I mean mm -hmm. acting in movies so that was really subconscious subconsciously me trying to bring that into fruition so these actors can see this, so you know these directors can see these movies mm -hmm. or these videos and be like, "Yo, I gotta get him in a movie. Mm -hmm. I gotta make a movie with him," and yada yada yada, right? Mm -hmm. And that was what I was trying to do, and it worked, right? Because then I was able to get Mark Wahlberg in the joint, and I was able to get these other actors and Rotimi and yada yada yada. And then Will. I ended up actually Will Smith, yeah. right? Then I ended up actually getting in movies with them, right? But they called me to be Mark Wahlberg, put me in a movie, my first movie ever. Shout out to my brother Mark Amazing. Wahlberg. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Will Smith had me in Bad Boys Four. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is fire. That's about to drop. That's an exclusive. Mm -hmm. I know you're yeah. in Bad Boys Four. Yeah, I, I, I um, I, you I supposed to reveal it. that? I think I, I think I revealed okay. it. Yeah, I posted it or whatever. You just wasn't paying attention. You got a big role. Nobody in that movie has a big role except Martin and Will. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. of the because of the direction they went in with the movie, everybody that comes in the movie is it's a section and then they're out and then it's just mm -hmm. like on to the next person that comes in the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to see you act as much as I want to see you create. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? I think that yeah. I, I, so, so I'm sure you got something in the works, like your own personal. I think that um when you, when you say create, talking about music or what? Movies. Oh, oh, yeah, create yeah. Or like TV my show. own yeah, movie yeah. or TV show, like how, um, like, uh, um, like Fifty Does Power or Child Is Gambino Did Atlanta. Or what's his Dave Lil, does Lil Dicky. Lil, uh, Lil Dicky does Dave. Ben Staples. Yeah, Ben Staples. Staples. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just seen Ben Staples shit fire too. I, mm -hmm. I like, yeah. I like that. Um, what they got going on, but even that, right? Even the opportunity like that to do things like that, I feel like I'm setting myself up mm -hmm. for that when I kind of create my own visuals. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What was your thoughts on uh, Bobby Smurda? You know, speaking of people giving you props, he said that you were the master P of this generation. Mm. And he questioned why more people don't talk about you making a quarter million dollars a month independently. Mm. Mm -hmm. What'd you think about that? I thought that was, um, I thought that was fire. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, first of all, calling me a master P of this generation is, is fire. Cause master P was, that's P, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that's like, that dude is like the he's like the the first one of the first cats to really do this for real like you know what I mean independently and like really do it so like him calling me that was just like wow you know I didn't know he never he never displayed that to me before so with him going on you know saying that was like wow I didn't know he felt that way yeah. you know but um I think that that's dope that he as aspires to you know become independent and, and you know make his money and um. You know the music industry has changed a lot, so you know I I think that um I thought it was dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DMX is on the album. Yeah. Now, how, how did you get that verse? X. X. Break that down. You and X in the studio. How, how was that so, session? Uh, so it's called I didn't go for it. Two symbols on it too. Yeah. And symbols on it too. Love yeah. symbol. I spent some time with X. We went to um we played pool a few times. I got to pick his brain. He gave me a lot of advice. Uh. I had real nigga conversations with X just about like his life, his upbringing. You know, I was able to ask him a lot of personal questions just so I could understand him because I kind of had a feeling at some point that he was gonna go before his time. You really? know, yeah, a million percent. So I made it a point to ask him as many questions as I as I wanted to ask him. And um, yeah, he's a homie, bro. He he'll hit me up at like <laughs> that dude would hit me up at like text me at like one in the morning like yo, let's go out. Mm. Type shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, let's roll, and we go hit the, you know, the billiard or something. We we just go play pool mm -hmm. type shit. But um, he was a very interesting guy, and he was a real one. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he was from here. Mm -hmm. I don't think X was from here. What you mean from here? From where? Like, I you think mean, he's like from another dimension. Like yeah, spiritually, spiritually yeah, oh, you've never met yeah. somebody like DMX. Never. Yeah. Nothing about him. No, nothing. Was he's, like a human. He's <laughs> different, bro. Like nothing. He's different. And 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 I think and and one thing I loved about X was that. 
you know, he was he was um he was had a very tough exterior, right? He was very you never questioned his sexuality. He was a very tough exterior, but on the inside, like he would pray for you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like he he was very he was a very emotional guy too. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been through a lot of shit, you know what I mean? And um I when I had a conversation with him, you know, one day, you know, he had he was pretty much I was explaining to him how how uh me being signed to a label at this time, how I was just like felt defeated because I wasn't getting what I needed to out of the situation. And we had a real conversation in which he gave me some advice. And right after we had that conversation, I wrote, I'm not racist. Wow. It changed my entire life. Right wow. after we had that one conversation and I and he said, start from the drawing board. Come up with some come up with something groundbreaking. Force the hand of the label. Make them believe. Wow. Shit. So y'all been at a relationship. Yeah. Man. This is a little something, yeah. When did he do the verse? Years ago. Yeah. Wow. So you have more than one X verse, I'm assuming. I got another uh, again. Yeah, I got another X uh, verse too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you wow. you talked about collabing with Future and you got Young Boy on this album, but then you said you feel like you, sometimes you got to dumb your lyrics down when you get on records with Future. So like when you collab with somebody like a Young Boy, like like why? Like why if you got to turn your volume down? It's not that. It's just I think sometimes I think that like, I'm such a fan of a lot of different types of music. Mm-hmm. I I love like there's there's future records that I love. You know what I mean? He got some he got some bops like Young Boy. Like he got some bops. Mm-hmm. Not, maybe not all of them. We don't we don't love all of Future's music. We don't love all of Jordan's music. We don't love all of anybody's fucking music, right. right? But the point is is I'm a fan of. You know, a lot of people wouldn't would be surprised to know that I'm, I listen to a lot of different types of shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if I jump on a record with with certain people, you know, I'm not trying to go off like that. I want to go into their world sometimes, and I want to like have fun with it, and you know what I mean, like play with it a little bit. Pause. Pause. Now yeah. that 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 was I'm, that I'm, was that one. Yeah, I'm, 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 on, I'm on it, boy. That I'm on one, it. That one was a pause. I'm on like, it. Pause. Uh, someone when. When rappers get like big, like you know, pause. on they well, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a woman, so yeah, you pause for me, all right, fine. But when um, you know, when they make it to a certain level of success, a lot of them have to move out of their city. Man, um, how involved are you with your city, or are you? When even you say still there? when you say, um, how involved am I? What you mean by that? Yeah, like, do you still live there? Like, nah. do you? Okay, nah. how often do you go back? Um, I got like family there, and shit. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. Um, so I'd be around sometimes, but I'm okay. very like cautious, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't just be outside like that, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, okay. Was it because of like other situations you've seen happen, like you know, in rap, or just because it's something that personally happened to you? Nah, ain't nothing really personally happened to me, mm-hmm. ain't nothing, ain't nothing ever happened to me, to, you know what I'm saying? But you just gotta be ready, you feel mm-hmm. me? So. If I am outside, I'm not outside without a strap. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm outside, I'm not outside like ready for whatever because you just never know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you're in a position that I'm in, pause. <laughs> Positions. <laughs> Positions, you know, I got you. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that was, that was a crazy one. Now, I was going to ask you, you with your family, you know, you, you yeah. got two kids and, of course, you have your sister here today. Mm-hmm. How are you with your family and breaking down the business and, and teaching them? You know? I don't. I keep that separate. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy as hell, man. I keep the music. <laughs> yes, I don't. I don't. Nah, it's just that when I'm with family, it's family time. That's it's family, family time. I don't want to, I don't even like mixing business with family and, you know, explaining business. It's like, you know, when you say that, who asked that? You? Or you? Yeah, I did. Which one? You, right? Mm-hmm. The business? Mm-hmm. When you explained, when you said like breaking down the business, what you mean by that? Um... A little bit of everything, so especially with your kids, letting them know where it comes from, how hard it is, because the route that you're taking is a route that most people could never figure out. Yeah. You're doing independent, you're mm-hmm. doing it on your own, you're investing in yourself. My son is about eight years old, so his, his he, he, he karate, you know, mm-hmm. video games. Yeah, like he's not in a in a place where he can even understand or comprehend that, right? And it's like, you know, I don't, I try to let him be a kid, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, and keep him away from. I don't want him to to grow, pause before, before his time, you know. So, um, then I 
almost two year old. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm with my family, it's family time. It's like I learn how to separate the two. You know, so if I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm with my family, I'm with my family. I'm not working and having my family and doing it. That I got my little sister here. You know what I mean? Because like that's like my homie. You know what I'm saying? I want her to come. You know to experience all this because she works. She's a you know she's a RN. You know what I'm saying? So nice. she work hard in her field. She don't really get the time to like really be around any of this shit. So it's like I'm proud of her. So it's like when she got yo. You want to come out to the Breakfast Club? You want to come out here and do this, do that? She like hell yeah. I could take a little time real quick and come do this. You know what I'm saying? So um, apart from that, my mama she'll roll with me. You know what I mean? She loves going to concerts. She loves doing shit like this. She loves, you know, where you going? New York? I'm going to New York. I'm going here. I'm going there. And I want to take her so she can really experience this shit too. Mm-hmm. She went, she was on a Bad Boys uh, movie set. Mm-hmm. I want her to really, you know what I'm saying, like experience this shit with me. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But when it comes to creating and it comes to like that, I try to keep that shit like separate. When I'm with, Because I don't want to be like recording and making music and then I'm with my kids and then I gotta like I don't want to feel like they are not getting the time that they need from me so it's like I just separate time you know what I'm saying what if I'm a cousin who wants to work in the frozen yogurt spot can I ask you about that <laughs> yeah I got I, my niece that she worked there okay type shit you know what I mean and is that in your city or is that what no nah, that's like on, on the outskirts oh okay yeah 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 that's yeah. something you want to franchise um, I feel like I could. Yeah, I yeah like it's I frozen could. yogurt. We, yeah. we need that. <laughs> I feel like I could. Yeah. What made you want to do frozen yogurt? Cause I was, I was always um. In the morning, I stopped eating breakfast. I started mm-hmm. drinking like protein shakes and like shit like that. So I was always spending my time at like this one spot, and I was like, you know what? I'm about to just do my own shit. Mm-hmm. My first brick and mortar. You know what I'm saying? Like my first business outside of the telly. You know the music shit and outside of that. So. Nope. I want to ask you about a line from uh, that Jelly Roll said and uh, Best For Me. He said, how can you love someone and learn to let them go? Do you think that's achievable from your experience? That's my middle name. Damn. That's my middle name. Mm-hmm. That's one of the big, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the things about myself that I recognize as, you know, a part of myself that I hate but I love at the same time that I'm able to do. Mm. Shut that switch off, mm. you know. Were you ever unable to do that? Um, and that's why you, why that's like nah, the best No, I just think that I know? became desensitized to pain, mm-hmm. you know, de- de- desensitized to hurt, you know. So it's like in order to not really feel it, pause, you know, I I um I learned how to create my 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 own light switch to where I could just shut the light off, mm-hmm. and nobody's safe from that light switch. You know what I mean? And it's it's a it's a pretty fucked up thing to have you know what I'm saying because it's it's um it's real difficult sometimes to you know build real relationships when you can do that you know what I'm saying when you could just shut off a switch and then just be like you know and nobody's safe from that I've had to do it to family friends girls you know and it's like if you if you experienced it at the level that I've experienced it with some of the closest people to you, nobody's safe. Mm-hmm. Nobody's safe. I think some people think unconditional love requires the acceptance of harmful behavior. And I, I agree. I don't, with agree you. I don't agree with that though. I feel like um, a lot of people think that just because you love them means that you got to keep them around mm-hmm. or you got to deal with bullshit that you don't want to deal with. I feel like my mental health and my peace of mind is the most important thing to me Word. above anything else, right? Like my sanity is the most important thing to me. So if you keep, if you bring in, if we clashing, there's an incompatibility there, right? And it's like that has to be addressed or else we're just gonna be incompatible, right? And it's like mm-hmm. a lot of people think incompatibility just is in, within relationships, but it's really within friendships, it's within workspaces it's within a lot of different things right it's like how compatible are you to me and you know and it's like once i realize and once i see that we're not compatible that's when i gotta go ahead and flip that light switch off Mm -hmm. and then you take that like i never cared about you at all but that's not the truth the truth is i still love you we're just not compatible Mm -hmm. you gotta go your way and i gotta go my way you know what i'm saying and and um 
it's a tough thing for me to even do because it's like, damn, like I gotta, I had to do that again. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's hard to have like, it's hard to, it's hard to have real genuine relationships when that happens. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but in the end, you're still protecting you though. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I got a couple more questions. Uh, there was a there was a GoFundMe of a woman who was killed. And you donated ten grand, but then she ended up being in your music video. Yeah. Did you know that that she was in your video before you donated? Yeah, I knew okay. her. Okay, I knew her personally. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew her personally, and um, it was just a sad situation. Yeah, you know, very sad, very sad situation for the city. Um, you know, it's another reminder that you know you be here one day and tomorrow you be gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like what happened to that young woman and her daughter was was horrific, you know? And it's like, I, I felt guilty because she was in a video. Mm-hmm. And she, in the video, she was rapping in the car dead. She died in the car. Damn. You know, so it's like, it was just haunting. You know, you go back and watch it. I'm still thinking about taking the video down just because I just, just you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's just it's just so, you yeah. know? Jeez. It's just one of them spooky coincidences. Freak accident. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, Hold yourself accountable. For nah, that. I'm not holding myself accountable. Mm-hmm. It's really just like, it's just, I don't know. It's a freaky thing, though. But mm-hmm. still to yeah. see it in yeah. one of your videos and it actually yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things disgusting, man. And it's like, you know, her daughter had passed away too, both of them, in the car. Wow. Damn. Somebody had ran up and sprayed the car up with her daughter in it. Her daughter was supposed to be on the first verse. On in that song, but I chose another little girl instead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I did know her daughter as well, um, and it was and it, and her, the mom and the daughter was really good people. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that really was um, tragic. And she was um, in the military. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, she served the country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, rest in peace to her. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. Rest in peace to Shorty. Uh, last question: yeah. Are you working on a joint album with Will Smith? Cause that was that was a rumor too. Um, I want to say I wouldn't call it a joint album. You helping him do his album though? Yeah, yeah. I was. I'm. You know, we've been working on some music together. Um, you know, I got Will in his bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I can't wait for the music to actually drop. Yeah, that'd you know, be interesting. What's the first offering? Something off the Bad Boys Four soundtrack? We actually about to go create something uh, for the Bad Boys Four uh, contract when I when I go out to his crib in a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Joiner, you working, my brother? That's right, brother. Yes. You are working. For New sure. album is out right now. Not now. I'm busy. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you for joining us, brother. I'm going on this tour. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going on a tour from in May from May to June. Uh, Drew, what's the dates? May 11th. Uh, June. May 11th. The June fifteenth, not now. I'm busy tour, featuring my man uh, Millie's. You know he's from the city too. Shout out to my bro Millie. Shout out to Millie's. And um, Dax, Dax out there doing his thing. Oh, yeah, I put him I on the on the joint too. So Dax is cool. So he's going on there. Um, shit, anything else you want to say? Album out Friday. Album out Friday. Um, anything else you want to say? That's it. <laughs> I appreciate y'all having me 15. out here. Thank Join you so Lucas. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect. Join right. Lucas. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.